What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts and I'm back with another Texans film breakdown today by Crazy High Demand. This is hands down the most requested player I've got film. I appreciate y'all's support so much. So I've been a big Gary on Conley fan. I really believe in his game and his film shows such an amazing cornerback. I truly believe he's not only the best cornerback on our team, but the best in the division hands down. Gary on Conley has always been a great cornerback. Since his days at Ohio State, he was always a first round talent and he was prided on his man coverage skills. Then when he got to Oakland, at first he was really solid because they were playing a man heavy scheme. However, then they changed coaches and primarily ran zone, which is where he struggled. But that doesn't matter, throw all of that away, because if you play him to his strengths, he's a dominant corner. Luckily, we were able to trade just a third round pick for Conley, which I believe is actually a steal, and bringing him to Houston is probably the best move GM Bill O'Brien has made so far. We got ourselves a legit cornerback one who's sticky in press man coverage and is still young and getting better. I'm so excited to show you all the film, so as always, if you enjoy the video, please do hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. We're on the road to a thousand subs, and that's honestly a huge goal of mine. So I think Garyon Conley is locked down in press man coverage, and you want your top corners to be able to play man coverage and take away a wide receiver out of the game. And the main thing I look for out of a man coverage corner is if they have fluid hips or not, and Garyon Conley certainly does. And you need to have fluid hips because you have to be able to smoothly transition when a wide receiver is making their break, whether it's inside, outside, or stopping, you have to be able to have fluid hips and good change of direction skills to stick with them. So on this play, the Texans are in a cover two man, and this wide receiver that Conley is on, he's going to be running a slant. And he runs it pretty well. He sells this fake to the outside by taking a head fake and a step to the outside. And Gary and Conley, he bites just a little bit on it. You can see that he takes the fake and he kind of flips his hips a little bit to the outside and he's trying to respect that outside fake. And this could get him in a really bad position because as a corner, you don't want to overcommit too early. You want to stay square with your hips as long as possible until you actually think the wide receiver is making their break. And so, like I said, Conley's a little bit aggressive here. He flips his hips to the outside, but this isn't just a detriment for him because he has such good hips, they're fluid, and he has good change of direction skills. In one step, he's able to flip his hips from the outside to the inside right there, and then boom, he's staying on top of the wide receiver, he stacked him the rest of the way, and he only gives up a little bit of space here because he runs into Zach Cunningham, and that kind of acts like a pick. But it's just really good hips out of Conley, and this is just a good baseline for what good hips on a corner look like. So that first play was a good example of Conley not being too aggressive, but on this play, he's really aggressive with his hips, and it still doesn't matter because he's able to flip them three times really well. So look how we square here, then the wide receiver takes an inside release. So Conley follows with inside hips, then boom, wide receiver goes outside, so he completely flips his hips around, and then one more time when the wide receiver is actually breaking inside on the route, he completely flips them around yet again for the third time this route. When the wide receiver made his break now and he's cutting inside, Conley's still right in stride. He's right in that hip pocket. So most corners, they can, they'll can they get shook off of one hip transition, but Conley made three really dramatic ones where he had to completely flip his hips on this one, and he still stayed attached. That's just insane. So on these plays, Conley's not even being targeted. He's just got these wide receivers in a box to the point where quarterbacks aren't even looking his way. And that's the mark of a real good cornerback. So now on this one against Cortland Sutton, look at him flip his hips outside like that. It's just so smooth, that transition that he makes. It may look easy, but I swear it's not. This is some freaky athleticism out of Gary on Conley, and the fluidity of his hips helps him just shut down this out route completely against a really good wide receiver in Cortland Sutton. So the next thing that makes Conley so great in press man coverage is his ability to feel the break of the wide receiver at the top of their route. And so on the previous play against Sutton, he took an inside release on that out route, which resulted in Conley having to flip his hips back outside. And on this play, it's a deep out by AJ Brown, and he takes an outside release instead. So this is a good example to show how Conley defends the same type of route, but two different ways, depending on the release. And so because he takes this outside, Conley never has to flip his hips at the top here. Instead, he just has to be able to feel the break and stop on a dime when AJ Brown stops. 
And he does that so well because he's subtly physical throughout the route and at the stem where he's kind of holding on to AJ Brown here, you can see. And so because he's able to hold the hips of the wide receiver, the wide receiver's hips don't lie. That's why they tell, that's why they teach corners to stare at the core of a, of a wide receiver because the hips are going to tell you where they're going to go. And so because he's able to hold the hips of AJ Brown and feel out the break, he's able to stop on a dime with him, basically running this route for him. And there's no separation at the top of the route here. You can see AJ Brown is locked up. And if you want to talk about competition, the best cornerbacks, I'm saying that Gary Ann Conley is the best cornerback on this team and the best in the division. Those best high-level cornerbacks have to do it against high-level competition. We saw it with Cortland Sutton. Now we're seeing it with AJ Brown, two young budding star wide receivers who are really good and Conley's locking them up when i was watching the film and by my tracking in two games against the titans last year conley was targeted 12 times but he only gave up five catches for 55 yards and had three pass breakups and how much of that came in press man coverage just one catch for nine yards and that's insane when you're going up against aj brown and corey davis now also against the broncos he was only targeted three times giving up two catches for 16 yards However, none of those came when he was in press man, and none of those came against Cortland Sutton. So I'm showing that the film shows that he locked him down, and the stats showed as well. So getting back to what I was talking about, on this play you can see that Conley just does a really good job to stop on a dime with the wide receiver. And again here against the double move, he does so well to just stop at the stem of the route and just run that route for the wide receiver. If we play it back here, you can see that the wide receiver, he's going to kind of stutter and trying to have this like stutter go that turns into a curl. I don't know what the proper terminology is for it, but you can see right here, he has that little stutter. And so Conley's going to be thinking, okay, maybe he's trying to stutter and go me. So he's going to have to be hauling ass to catch up. And so he's running full speed, right? And when you're running full speed, I'm sure you know, it's hard to stop on a dime when you're running full speed. But that's exactly what he's able to do here. He senses that the wide receiver is breaking and then boom. His ability to come to a full stop like that is crazy and just turn around and run the route for the wide receiver. If it was thrown his way, easy pick. And it's kind of plays like these that we don't get to see on game day with the broadcast view that we get because a lot of cornerback play like this when you don't see the top of the route because it's off the screen, you know what I mean? And you can't get a true appreciation for what he's doing on a play-by-play -play basis if you don't see the All-22 film. And that's why I love All-22 film. And so that kind of ties into my next point where I think Conley got a bit of a bad rep for kind of getting beat occasionally, which we would see on game day because we wouldn't have the full view and he'd get beat initially and that would kind of give us a, a sour taste of him like, oh, he's, he's not actually that good. You know what I mean? But then he shows the recovery skills to get back into the play. And if you think about it, every corner in the NFL, they're going to get beat eventually. But it's what you can do after your beat that really can make or break you as a corner. Are you going to be satisfied and continue to get beat and show bad effort and just kind of give up on the play? Or are you going to fight back into the play and still break it up or get back into a good position at least? And Conley has shown time and time again on those couple of occasions that he'll get beat. He has the determination to fight back into a play and break it up. And you can see that here against this one on AJ Brown. So Brown is going to get physical on the release of this route here and he kind of bodies Gary on Conley pushing him off of him and Conley looks like he could be beat here. Brown has a good couple steps on him but Conley doesn't give up and at this point he has the great split second reaction to read that AJ Brown is cutting inside on this post and so he reads it and he tries to follow him and this is the really important part here is he doesn't try and make up ground and follow AJ Brown. Instead, he tries to beat him to his spot. He tries to read where is AJ Brown going to go and then take a better angle. So he takes, instead of taking an angle like this, that's closer to AJ Brown, he tries to take a sharper angle, kind of running the route for him and beating him to his spot because that's the only way he knows that he can recover and get back into the catch point. And he does just that, gets back into the catch point, plays the ball aggressively, even though this is a high ball because Ryan Tannehill, he wants to throw it high up to AJ Brown because AJ Brown's got some size. He knows that. But Gary Ann Conley also has size. And so he's able to rise up, play this ball aggressively and smack it out of his hands. Great play. So here's another great example of recovery skills against Brashad Perriman and Burner. You can see that he's created space here, but then Conley does a great job to close the space, get back into the catch point, break it up without playing too aggressively on the wide receiver so that he's called for pass interference. That's a clean play right there. Here's another example against DJ Chark, another legit wide receiver that he shut down, and this is just a great play to recover back into the catch point and break it up. 
He particularly did really well in this game versus the Jaguars. He helped hold Chark to just four catches for 32 yards on the day. However, none of that came against Conley, and the one time that he was targeted, boom, pass breakup. And so that transitions to my last point of how great Conley is at the catch point, because you can be in great coverage, but if you can't win at the catch point, then what's the point? And I'm kind of just going to run through these so that the video is not crazy long. And also that these plays just kind of showcase everything I've been harping on about how Conley wins anyways. Like on this play, he just does really well to stop on a dime at the top of the route, staying in position and being able to make a play on the ball. And on this one, Conley takes the outside fake, but then he flips his hips back inside so smoothly that he's able to fight back into position and then win at the catch point right here. The wide receiver has inside positioning on him, but because, but because Conley's got such great ball skills, he's able to fight back inside, use his length, and break up the ball. This one pairs both his fluid hips right here on the break to the inside, and also his recovery skills to fight back into the play to lunge for that pass breakup. Because at this point, when he gets inside on him, he's kind of beat there. But Conley doesn't give up, and yet again, he shows great effort by diving for that play, using his extension and his length to still break it up, even when it looked like a for sure touchdown. He had so before I get into Conley's weaknesses, I really want to drive home how good he was in press man last year. So I watched every single snap of Conley and tracked the statistics you see right now. I wanted to see the difference statistically in how he did when in different coverages. And so you can see that in 412 snaps last year, he was targeted 23 times in press man, but only gave up 6 catches, which is ridiculous, and results in a completion percentage allowed of just 26%. Now that's crazy low, and for frame of reference, Stefan Gilmore's best season in terms of completion percentage allowed was at 42%, and legendary Darrell Rivas, his career low was just 45%. So if Conley purely played press man the entire season, it would be crazy, and I wouldn't expect it to stay at 26%, but it would be pretty damn elite. Now you're probably thinking that those 23 targets are a lot, they were his most targeted coverage type, however, it's really not a problem when you think about how often he played in press man. By my tracking, he was in press man 67% of total snaps. So if you're playing that one type of coverage more often, then of course you're going to be targeted more. But it's really the completion percentage and PBUs that matter. And as you can see, the completion percentage number skyrockets when you look at him in off-man coverage, which was a big struggle for him. And it gets higher for zone coverage, but it wasn't even as bad as his reputation says that he is in zone. So now with that said, let's continue on with the film and look at his weaknesses. So the main one is off-man coverage as I showed you with the stats and the film shows kind of the same thing. These aren't too big of a worry for me because as long as you play him to his strengths and the scheme that fits him, he's going to dominate. So now looking on this play, what went wrong? So with Conley, his backpedal early in the season was bad and I think that was coming from Oakland. I think it was bad habits that he, they taught him and I'll explain that in a little bit. You can see he abandons his backpedal really quickly on this one and he flips his hips and starts to run with the wide receiver just way too early before he even needs to. And so the problem with this is when you're running full speed like this with your hips flipped, it's so easy for the wide receiver to make just one cut and then boom, you're roasted. And so before when I talked about Conley having really fluid hips and being able to have good change of direction, that was because he was able to be physical and be able to feel the break, which I also talked about as well. Now those benefits come in press man, but they aren't here in off man because you can't feel the wide receiver. You can see that he has no hands on him. That's clearly easy to see, you know what I mean? And so because he can't feel the break, it makes it so much harder for Conley and this transition just isn't as smooth, so he can't get around as quickly and change direction to the outside to follow the wide receiver. My problem with off-man coverage here is that there's just some times where there's nothing that the cornerback can even do. I mean, they'd have to break on the ball so quickly because look at this huge cushion. Like, there's nothing that they can do to beat the wide receiver to their spot there. There's too much ground to cover. On another play like this, where Conley even has a good backpedal, which they seem to fix out of him once he got to the Texans, like... He's just giving too much of a cushion to the wide receiver that there's nothing that he can do. In off-man coverage like this, you're going to have to play, be playing a lot more off of your keys, reading the wide receiver and guessing what he could be possibly doing before he runs the route. Whereas in press man, when you're allowed to be more physical and you can feel those breaks, it honestly makes it easier as long as you're good at it, which Conley is. So please, Texans, just keep playing Conley in press man as much as humanly possible. Stop playing him and off. Now, talking about his zone coverage, as we saw from the stats, it wasn't as bad but he just didn't play it a whole lot so that's why he didn't get targeted that much but on this play the texans they're in their patented cover four and conley's gonna have a deep quarter here and so his back pedal is gonna be pretty good but then he turns yet again too quickly and he's just not able to drive on the ball quick enough 
So that's really where Conley's problem in zone coverage comes from. It's just a little technical refinement that can be fixed, and it has nothing to do with his actual awareness in zone coverage. And a great example of this is here where the Texans, they're in cover six. And cover six, for Conley's side, it basically works the same as a cover four like we saw in last play. He's gonna have a, a deep quarter yet again. And so with how the Raiders are lined up, Conley's thinking pre-snap that he's gonna have this outside wide receiver and the safety Jaleel Adai is gonna take the inside guy. However, the Raiders are actually in a very good play call here to mess with that thought in Conley's head. These wide receivers are going to be running a post and a corner route, but they're going to change it up a little where they're going to run a switch release. So as you can see here, the inside wide receiver is actually going to be releasing outside and the outside wide receiver is releasing inside. And so now at this point, the wide receivers are flipped, right? And so Conley thinks, okay, now I got to take this other wide receiver who he's probably breaking outside. However, that's not the case yet again. And this guy, he's still the guy who's running the post route. So then when he breaks inside, Conley has to pass this off and communicate with Jaleel Adai to take that route. And then he has to know that, boom, a corner route is going to be coming his way. So he has to break on that ball, which he does. He flips his hips nicely, breaks on the ball, drives downhill, and plays the ball really aggressively. This is just a great example of strong communication and understanding of zone coverage principles. It's clear that it's not like Conley is dumb or anything. Like, he knows how to play zone and how that works. And even with a tricky play call like this, he's able to outsmart it and still make the play. So he has all the gifts athletically and intellectually to play zone. It's just little tech technical things that he needs to refine and having more continuity in the system, getting to know everyone in the secondary better, it's only going to make him look better. All right, that'll do it for my Gary on Conley film breakdown. Huge shout outs to everyone who recommended him. I hope I got all of y'all, but there were a ton and I love that. So shout out LaMarcus Hicks, Joe Nathan 721, Joe Tato, Dayon Crumbly, Harris Beard, Eric Watts, Gonzo the Great, Eric Hayes, Arthur Stelly, and Jesse. I really do appreciate all of y'all. The support has been crazy, and I want to input your ideas. So if you want to recommend someone, comment down below, and I will do my very best to get to it. I hope that through the film, I've helped inspire confidence in y'all about Garyon Conley. He's locked down in press man coverage to the point where he doesn't even get looked at. I really hope we give him a midseason extension, man. He's just too good and honestly the best cornerback in the division and one of the top guys in the entire AFC. They better put some respect on Conley's name next year. So if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. If you're still listening, you're a real one. I appreciate you. And the question of the day is, do you think it was a mistake to decline Conley's fifth year option? Let me know. Also, I'm a part of Texans Unfiltered. We've got a great website where I write articles about the Texans and do more film breakdowns. And we've also got a great podcast. So if you're itching for more Texans content, we got you. The links will be in the description. Would really appreciate it if y'all could check us out. All right, this was Jordan or Texans Thoughts. Hope you enjoyed and come back for more videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Take care, everyone.